special today as if it hasn't been already. But we got something special because God's in the house and JD is in the house bringing the word today. John David, come on up. Have your liberty with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All preachers wear red, I guess. I don't know. All right, Mo Give. I'm just kidding. All right, so oh, how do you follow that up, right? Uh, we, uh, I love worship. I said this this morning. I'll say it again. It's like today was a crummy day. I haven't been outside, but it was cold and windy and kind of gross and yucky, right? And so, like, it's a good stay-at-home day, and then we get to come to church and worship and just Woo! shake that off, yeah. right? So, so now we're just in an environment uh, that is completely different, right? So... Let's just pray real quick. Father, I, uh, I thank you for, for just being true and faithful and who you are and never changing. And I just ask that the, the rest of this time here, Lord, that there is a quieting of, uh, of whatever it is that's shaken up in our lives, Lord, and that we're able to hear you clearly exactly what you're trying to say to us individually. Uh, and so, Lord, I just, in your name, I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so if you are anything like me, you need to be told something more than once. Uh, I basically, I never get it the first shot. I need a couple of shots. You got to remind me. Uh, we have a Google Calendar as a married couple for a reason, uh, and it is not for me. Uh, or it's, it, it's for me. It's for me. Um, so... Uh, I read Revelation during the fast, and I've gone back to it just kind of over and over again, and... It's, it's interesting to me how it starts. So I'm just going to lay out some scriptures here, and we're just going to roll off that. Uh, Revelation 2.7 says, Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Uh, Revelation 2.11. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. 2.17. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. 229, 3.6, 3.13, 3.22. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Um, in the message version, it says, Are your ears awake? Listen, listen to the wind words, the Spirit blowing through the churches. How many know he's, he's blowing through here today? Yeah. yeah. Seven times. Seven times, right? Once for every church that Revelation started uh, writing to, right? And um, it's not an accident, you know? It's not an accident that, that we have that reminder. Um, especially being human, um, we tend to get busy, distracted, miss things, whatever. Uh, so I'm thankful when I get more than one uh, reminder. Um, I got woken up in the middle of the night uh, yesterday. And, and I, got, I got woken up and I uh, did what uh, came natural to me. I tossed and turned for a really long time. And, and then I got on Facebook and scrolled around. Right? And, and so... I knew, I knew that in my spirit, I knew that I was, like, God had wanted to spend some time with me. I knew the Holy Spirit was, like, leading me to, to uh, some alone time, right? And so, so I didn't, uh, and I did, just didn't do that. And instead, I got on Facebook, and I scrolled around and uh, saw some things that um, were not Christ-like, right? If you've ever been on Facebook, it's definitely not all Jesus, uh, so, so I'll give you some, some backstory to that. I, uh, I work with a woman who, who uh, has a hard time with Christians, right? So as, as a kid, um, had some bad stuff go through the church, whatever, she got hurt by some humans, and uh, to this day hasn't gotten over it, right? So the thought of, like, Jesus and any sort of, like, Christian talk, like, you know, it's uncomfortable. She is, a really, she is totally against it, right? And... Uh, and so I read that and continued to toss and turn for more time. Uh, and then finally, like, the, the Holy Spirit continued to just 
like basically push me out of bed, right? And, and God continued to say, like, I want time with you. I want it now, right? Because at 6 o'clock on Saturday morning, uh, I don't really have anything else going on, right? So, so I woke up, I went downstairs, and uh, I, my Bible is completely disorganized uh, because I have, you know, 37 different note uh, like bookmarks and like pieces of paper scrolled in there and like there's just a ton of stuff in there, right? Because I just get excited. I flip around, whatever. And uh, so I, I open my Bible and there was a, a note from a message that I gave a while ago and it said Philippians 2, 3 through 4 on it, right? And so I was like, okay, you know, go on. Uh, I, I flipped to it and this is, this is what Philippians said. It said, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for only your own interest, but take an interest in others too. Um, Right, so so I recognized that the Spirit was trying to lead me uh, into some time. And after I finally got there... uh, you know, God, God was able to move me to some scripture, right, to point out, like, the flaws in me. It had nothing to do with her, right? It didn't have anything to do with her. Um, and really, as a church, if you guys will just stand with me in agreement that, that God's going to sweep over that office and he's going to move on her heart and heals, he's going to heal everything, right? And she's going to get born again. Um, but... But so what happened, because, because I had the, the opportunity to follow uh, the, the leading, um, I got some fruit from that, right? Um, and usually, uh, I, I have to make a habit of getting to recognize when the Holy Spirit wants my attention, right? Or when the Holy Spirit's present, because it's not, it's not like a natural thing, right? And so like the youth, um, the youth that were in here on Wednesdays, I gave all of them a notepad. Right? And so the goal of this was that at the end of each and every day, the last thing that they would do as they were getting into bed right, would be to take five minutes, take your notepad, and think about the day that you just went through. Right? And so the, the goal was to, to see when God showed up, when and if you felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. Right? And so if, if you have a hard time with that, because I understand that like, that's kind of a hard thing, um, especially when you're 13. You know, I, I gave them um, sentences to start right? So like today I felt God's presence when, right? Today I, uh, I noticed the Holy Spirit at, right? Or whatever. And just give them an opportunity because really it's just like people who work out, right? Like we need to just get in the, the habit of, of coming into, uh, you know, recognizing when the Holy Spirit's there because otherwise, you know, my phone's ringing like right now, <laughs> right? Like it's super easy. You know? It's, it's, it's really easy to get distracted, you know, between work and kids and whatever, dishes, it doesn't matter what you have going on. There are all these things crying for your attention, right? And so it's easy to miss that, you know, that, that subtle nudge. So I was going to initially write about what it meant to be led by the Spirit, and, and over the course of praying and getting into this, I decided that I wanted to just give an introduction of who the Holy Spirit is and how to know him and how to recognize that, that he's there because uh, you cannot be led by something that you don't know, right? You can't be led by anything that you don't recognize. It doesn't work that way. Nothing will happen, right? So we need to be conscious of, of the Holy Spirit, right? And so the best way that I describe it is that there's spirit-led believers and, and not. And the difference is just like people who work out, right? You have motivated people who go to the gym for January-ish, maybe a little bit of February, right? And then you have the ones who are disciplined. And those are the people who work out all year. They don't need a new year to work out. They're already doing it, right? And so as believers, we need to be spirit-led because we don't want to have like these short motivational periods. We want to be disciplined, Right, and that difference it is, you know, motivated believers will capture some of their thoughts sometimes. They will have short bursts of, you know, successes or whatever you want to call it. They will eventually get worn out and go stagnant. 
right? You'll get, you'll get stagnant. If you work out for a month and see some change and stop, you'll go back to how you were. <laughs> Disciplined, spirit-led believers, they're the ones that, that through the spirit are going to capture every thought. They're the ones that are going to fight the good fight. When you see the scripture about finishing the race with endurance and living from glory to glory, that's Holy Spirit-led right? That's, that's not us. That's not me. If, if any part of this message rings true to your spirit today, it's not because I'm an awesome teacher. It's because God's good and this is what he does, right? The spirit inside of you is going to sit well with that. It's going to recognize, right? So John 16, it's a little long, but it's, it's the best way to put it. It's better than me. Uh, John 16, 7, he says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I don't go away, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but I can't, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. And so Jesus knew. He knew the whole time. It is in our best interest that we have the advocate here now to help us. This is not a future thing. This is for today. So, how do we get to know the Holy Spirit? How do we form this personal relationship, right? And so, uh, one of those ways is through leadings, um, being led by the Spirit, right? And so, when I first started coming to church, there were like cliche things that Christians tend to say because it's, you know, either it's scriptural or we just say it because we all hang out all the time. Uh, and so, you get used to saying things and sometimes I think in that shuffle we forget like where it came from, All right? So, so Luke 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, right? And it goes against what we think as humans, uh, at least in my case, because the, it, it's hard for me to think like, well, why, why are you led into the wilderness, Right? Like, why would God take you and put you somewhere tough? Right? Like, like, there's a part of you in the natural that it doesn't make sense. Um, but you have to understand uh, that God's everywhere. Right? It's, it's not about whether you see wilderness or you see, you know, something pleasant. God's everywhere. Right? And so if, if, if we're being led by the Spirit, then that's where we're supposed to be, and God's already there waiting for you, and he's going to reveal exactly what the Spirit's trying to show you, right? And so we, we um, watched a video in, in our, our youth on Wednesdays, right? And it was about um, the pastor from Bethel, right? Bill Johnson, and he, uh, he, he got sick. He was in the hospital for a while, and... And so while he was there, he, he basically refused to, you know, let sickness get the best of him, right? And so he took it as a time of prayer. He took it as a time to, to spend time in the Word, right? And so as he was in the Word, he kept, he kept going to Psalm 23, right? Which, uh, if you've probably heard it, where it's like, um, even though I walk in the shadow of, of darkness, right? And, and so something special that happened to him was that as he was sick in the hospital, right, the Lord revealed, um, revealed things to him that couldn't get revealed anywhere else other than in the shadow of darkness, right? And so there was a special, unique privilege that came from him being in the hospital and led into, uh, into the wilderness, right? Because of that, because he was obedient, God revealed things to him that he wouldn't have had. So just because you feel like you're being led somewhere yucky, understand that God's going to be all over that situation. And there's going to be a, a special blessing that comes with that. Um, holy cow. It is almost 12. Okay. <laughs> Acts 13. 
One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the man laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. So Barnabas and Saul were set out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia and then sailed for the island of Cyprus. Right? And, and there are, there are story, there's story after story after story of people in the Bible being led by the Spirit to do you know, whatever it is that they're supposed to be doing at that time. Um, and as we uh, carry on, we start to recognize that nudge more and more, right? We start to be more familiar with that. I um, had a really awesome time at a Chili's after a service one time because I, I went and I ordered my food and I was by myself, which uh, doesn't happen often. And so as I sat, I was waiting for my food to come and the Holy Spirit uh, gave me this gentle nudge and was like, I want you to pray for the people that are behind you. And so I was like, all right, cool, not to, not, no. I'm, I went back to my phone and I continued to go through my phone, right? And so then again, sure as day, Holy Spirit nudged me again and, you know, same thing. I want for you to pray for these people behind you. And so, so I said, all right. And if you know me or if you've ever spent any time with me, sometimes I'm like mildly awkward, like in my, in my nature, right? And so, yeah. So, so I turned around and like approached like approach, approach their, their table. And, and, you know, I was like, excuse me, I need to pray for you guys, right? And so they were super warm, super accepting. And, you know, I joined them and I prayed over them. And as I was praying, the, the wife, she had, she had tears in her eyes. And we had about 20 minutes of awesome, awesome conversation. And they, they go to Living Hope. They're totally born again, like super rock solid, right? And uh, the whole time, my food got set on my table. I was, like, getting cold. And, you know, like 20 minutes goes by, and they're like, we're going to go, and you can eat. Like, you eat your food, we're going to take off. We got things to do. And I said, okay. And so they left, got back on my table, ate my food. Uh, and it came time for me to pay. And I asked for my bill, and the waitress was like, the people behind you paid for your food, right? And, and so before I had ever even moved to, to pray with them, they had already bought my food, right? Wow. So, so she was crying because, you know, they had been praying for me and felt led to bought my food, and then I popped up and was like, hey, what's up? I'm going to pray for you guys, right? Like, <laughs> like, I promise you, like, it might not always be an immediate reward, right? But, but the, the privilege of following that nudge will always be shown to us. It, it'll always be evident, yep. right? There's an inner witness that comes with the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, Romans 8, it says, for, our spirit, for his spirit joins with our spirits to affirm that we are God's children. Romans 9, with Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. Right. So as, as God's children, there's a, a bunch of awesome things that come with that. Right? And so the first, the first of which is that everybody here, our la everybody's last name, you're all Christ. Right? We're all God's family, God's children. And, and so because of that, we get the Holy Spirit inside of us and we get to feel peace that comes with it because peace is a, a fruit of the Spirit. Right? And so when we are trying to get direction for something in our lives, when there is something that's going on, if you are looking to buy a home, find a roommate, getting a new job, get, trying to get married, have kids, you know, whatever, it's personal for all of you. But this is the area where we're going to feel peace. Right? And so this is, the, this is the area where you might not feel peace. Right? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to line up with you. Um, and so that's that's why I like to pray when I remember to please open every door or shut it, right? So I know. Uh, and then tell me 12 times because I need that. Uh, there's going to be a check in your spirit is another way to know. And so, like, what does that mean? Uh, check in your spirit, it feels like a stoplight where you're pumping the brakes, you know? And, and sometimes it's, it's, it's really subtle and sometimes it's really dramatic, Right? It'll be different based on, you know, who you are and what's happening, right? But God, um, the, whole, the Holy Spirit will, will get your attention, right? And so, like, there's some good examples of that where, like, like you come home uh, and want to watch, like, a World Series game on TV, right? Any sports fans or news or 
Grey's Anatomy or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> The Bachelor. Uh, and, and, and you know, you, yeah, I just, I'm just going to call you out. You, you know what I'm talking about because it goes like this. You go and you sit down on the couch and you turn on the TV and you know that something's off right? You know, and it's like, it's almost like when you're a kid, and you're like stealing something, and you're like, nobody did that? Okay, so that was just me. <laughs> that was just me, um, but you know what I'm talking about, right? And you, you feel, you feel this nudge in your spirit. You're getting checked, like, like God is just saying, oh, come on, you can watch that. Uh, most people who have TV, you can record it, right? You can't record the word God wants to give you now, right? I could, I could tell you all kinds of, we've bought groceries, Radar and I, we, when we lived together, we bought groceries for a woman at Walmart, you know, and, and I like walk, prayed over her and watched her cry and stuff. Like, it's awesome. It's awesome. So awesome. Like, she was happy. She was happy. She wasn't like mad. Yeah. Um, as, as time goes on, right, like we start to know that just a little bit more. It becomes a little bit more familiar, right? And so after, after watching like just, just the fruit that comes from that, right, like why, like why don't we want this, you know? Um, I'm going to combine a couple of these. Dreams, prophecies, and visions, right? And so it's important to just remember that... Uh, Prophecies are going to sit well with your spirit, right? Exactly what we were just talking about. Like, you're going to have peace with it. There's not going to, like, prophecies, they're not going to have fear attached, right? So it's going to strengthen, encourage, or edify, right? So 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says, but the one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them, right? So let's back up to dreams prophecies, and visions, ways that the Holy Spirit is going to show, show up. Uh, Joel 2, 28, it says, Then after doing all those things, I will pour, my, pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike. Right? And so I am... Um, I've never really had like tons of like visions and like prophetic words and stuff like, and so it's something that I've been praying more because I want that, right? I want that in my life. And I also want to be able to have like the opportunity to like hear, like to recognize that spirit, right? I, I, want, chan I, want, I want more chances, you know, to, to follow the leading. Um, and so Tony Jr. and I were on the phone one day and I got this vision of us worshiping here. And I am not a good musician, um, not super awesome at the drums or the guitar or, like, singing. I am the best cojonist you've ever seen. And if you, if you come, yeah, 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 I think that I'm on, I think that I'm on on Wednesday. So maybe not. Either way, if you come watch Pastor Dwayne on Wednesday, there'll be a person on this cajon over here beating that drum. And if it's me, it'll be really good. And if it's somebody else, it'll be good, too. Uh, <laughs> so, so, okay, so Tony and I, Tony Jr. and I, we're in here, and we're just causing a ruckus. We're worshiping super loud and just going to town and singing and playing instruments and whatever, and God is, like, watching us from, from above, right? And so God's watching us, and he's got this big old smile on his face, you know, because he loves us, like, so much. And, and so as he's watching us, uh, there's no sound, right? There's no sound at all. And so we're just, like, we're just, like, making noise. And, and God is still laughing and smiling at us, even though he can't hear us at all. And so, like, while I was in it, I asked him, like, why are you, like, how come you're, like, smiling so much? And he said, because um, I don't really care what it sounds like. I want my kids to worship me. Right? And so, like, man, being led by the Spirit is incredibly awesome, and we're just going to have opportunities to, to, to just, like, have God just show us just little by little who he is over and over and over again. Right? And then, you know, people are going to get put on your path where you're going to be able to impart that, right? And you're going to be able to speak to them. Um, oh, my goodness. So good. Um, word of God. 
this this will be the last the last way to, to relationship build uh, the word of God, right? So exactly like the morning that I woke up, where I uh, opened my Bible, right, and it was like, uh, right, and it said Philippians two three through four, right? Um, God put that verse right in front of me, right, and I read it and it humbled me, right? Um, Hebrews four. You've heard this before. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the fastest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So I'm just going to stop with that, right? Because it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So when I woke up in the morning and neglected to follow the Holy Spirit's lead and play on Facebook, um, I saw this post right? Did I ever even say what it was? <laughs> awesome. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it basically was a, a post about how um, a woman and her child took their sick cat to the vet, right? And so uh, the conditions were not good. And the vet was like, um, well, you better just go home and pray that, you know, your animal turns out okay. And the kid responded by saying, we don't need any prayer here. Why don't you please do your job? Right? And, and then it was a series of posts beneath it where people were like praising the kid for like not wanting to pray and stuff, right? And so, so, so as I read that, right? And so here's, come back to the word. Exposing our innermost thoughts and desires, right? So as, as I read that, the Lord not only humbled me and said, stop thinking about you, think about others. He also showed me that I was like harboring bitterness against somebody that I see every day, Right? And I was unforgiving of somebody that I should be loving, right? And so it's not about me being bad. It's about him being good. And him being, him being good enough to be like, I'm going to reel you in and I'm going to use my word to reveal to you that you are a mess right now, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I, I need to, right? Or what? Go to work angry every day and watch somebody go to hell? So, we need to know what God says and the, the nudge from the Holy Spirit because every day there's a battle for you. Right? Every day. Galatians 5. It says, The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Look, man, if there's a war going out for you and you have two voices calling out to you, we better be able to recognize which one's Spirit. Right? And if we're actively in the Word of God, engaged, then when that stuff happens, we know exactly what to speak out against it, right? I, uh, Sarah fell the other day. My wife, um, if you don't know her, she is six months pregnant, and I love her very much. And she was walking down our stairs. Uh, we have wood stairs, right, uh, with socks on, right? So, now, so I've made a barefoot or slippers rule now, uh, so we got that covered. But they're all hardwood, right? So she had socks on, went to take the first step, missed it, boom, fell straight down, right? And so she, after finally getting a hold of me at work, had already talked to her doctor, right? And was like, I'm going to the hospital. They need to monitor me and make sure that I'm okay. Uh, if you could meet me there, that would be swell, husband. Um, so... So, so I did, duh, right? And, and so as, as I'm going there, uh, I realized this verse in Galatians rings true, right? Because, because one side of it wanted me to be scared and full of fear, right? And the other side wanted me to be free, right? So, so as I was driving, I prayed, over and over and over again. Uh, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no fear. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no fear. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no fear. Right? 
there's, and he's inside of me. There's no room for fear here. Right? There's no room here. And then when I got to the hospital, um, Pastor Tony called, and we were, we were talking about it, and he, he said, well, um, it, sits, it sits well in my spirit. Right? It sits well in my spirit. Right? And like six years ago, I just would have been like, oh, cool, that's Christian. It sounds smart. <laughs> it's got to be right. It's got to be the right thing. Pastor Tony said it. Right? It's got to be right. Uh, and I'll be honest, like, like, I love Pastor Tony, and I love, like, the time that we have together, and I like his thoughts and opinions on stuff, right? But I will take Pastor Tony's spirit feeling well over what Pastor Tony thinks about it every day of the week especially knowing what I know about the Holy Spirit. Whew, man. Can I keep going? Is this good? Yeah. Everybody all right? All right, cool. Here we go. So, 2 Corinthians 10, it says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. See, there's a lot of big words in there, right? But, but it basically means um, all the stuff that goes through us, it's like we have to run it through this funnel, you know, of the Holy Spirit. Um, which, if you remember the beginning of my message, if we are motivated and not disciplined believers, then our funnel's gone, right? We're not capturing these thoughts. They're submitted to a will that isn't in Christ, right? And all of a sudden, you have room for a total train wreck, right? First Peter 1. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. <laughs> That's beautiful. Proud people don't know that they're proud. Sin is not always recognized as sin. Bitterness and unforgiveness, it's not always known to the individual. I just told you about how I was harboring all, sort, all sorts of stuff. And it, it, it wasn't really pointed out until the Holy Spirit stepped in, right? And I put my phone down. But, but more of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Galatians 5. It says, Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Look, I'm going to go back and just that first sentence. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. This every part of our lives is what's going to help us to capture our thoughts. And when we're capturing our thoughts, then we're submitting them to the will of God. And when we're walking in that, that nudge from the Spirit is going to be like dynamite. And we're going to follow that, and God's going to break out all over the place. Right? So... So, so this verse right here, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives, is life, right? That's life to me. And then the second half, let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another, is basically a warning, right, to your flesh that says, if I feel like I am conceited, provoking someone, jealous of someone, right? Then we need to take a step back. It's like a trigger. It catches your attention and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. These are not fruits of the Spirit, right? And then the answer for that is directly above it. Let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Oh, it's so good. So, I'm going to invite the worship team back up here. I want to I wanna pray and worship with you guys, okay? Um, I got a little bit more, though, on my mind, so hold tight. Uh, as I was reading and praying and preparing for this, um, there were a couple of things that happened this week. Um, I have a nine-year-old son, and he was in his bedroom on his desk, and he, I don't know, I don't know what he was doing. He did something, and he smashed his light bulb on his desk lamp, and he smashed his light bulb, and, and so he uh, came downstairs to get me, 
right? And he's like, Dad, I broke this light bulb. He was like worried that he'd be in trouble, you know? And of course he's not. Um, it's an accident. And so he uh, invited me in his room to help clean up the mess, right? So I'll say that again. He invited me in to clean up the mess, right? And so there are other times where, where I am doing laundry. And so I go into Aiden's room and I go to put the laundry, you know, I, there's, like a, there's like a holding area where I set folded clothes and then it's on him that they make it into the drawer. That's his part, right? Um, and so while I'm in the room, I'm, I, I'm, I don't even really mean to, and I just kind of like look around, right? And I notice that like we have 75 cords plugged into the outlet, right? Not safe, totally dangerous, could be a fire it's, that needs to get removed. It is also a mess, right? And so to Aiden, he didn't realize that it was a problem, but I do, right? And so as a loving father, what I do is I step into that room and I say, hey boy, we need to clean up this mess and I'm gonna help you, right? Because he's never abandoned. You're not an orphan, I'm here with you. And, and so the word that I had for this church um, today is that we, we're falling into one of those categories, right? We either know that there is a mess and haven't asked the Holy Spirit to step in and help us clean it, right? Or we're on the other side of that where we also haven't invited them in, right? And the Holy Spirit wants to point out to you things that are messes, right? And then help you with that. And with that comes freedom and the gifts of the Spirit and all, all that beautiful stuff. So, oddly enough, I'm going to end with the same scripture that I ended with last time and we're going to go into worship for another song. And uh, I want for you to, as we worship, to engage engage in your spirit, whatever that means to you, right? Follow your lead. And then I also want to be able to pray, right? And so sometimes I invite people to come up front. Um, might be embarrassing for you. So what I, what I want to say is this. If any part of this pricked your spirit in any way, if you fall into one of those categories, if you're not okay with coming up front, step into an aisle, and the rest of us, if you are by any of those people, let's surround them and pray for them. Right? Because as the body, we're supposed to lift each other up. Right? So, so I want to read this scripture, and I'm going to read it slowly. And I want you to just allow for that to sink in. Right? And, then, and then we can just move into, move into some worship and... And one or the other, if you're feeling led, step out, come up, and everybody else, let's just love on and pray for each other, right? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Second right? Corinthians 3. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, for the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So if we're neglecting that, right, we don't have freedom in that area. There's no peace in that area. And so this message today is here to remind you that, that you can have that. Right? So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more and more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious Spirit. So the rest of us, like that says, are just praying and lifting up. Okay, so, so God is so good, and we need the Holy Spirit. Um, and so with that, let me pray real quick, and then we'll go into a, we'll go into worship. Um, Lord, I, I, I thank you for what you're doing here today. I thank you for each and every person here, for the people watching online. I thank you for being specific to the person.
on doing exactly what you promised to do. Lord, I know that, that each and every gift, all of that comes from above and it becomes, it comes from your goodness. We can't earn it. We don't have to be involved in 30 ministries and doing something special and have Christian faces. I come against any spirit that is a religious spirit and I stand in agreement that there will be freedom today from things that we haven't felt or didn't know existed. And so God, I just thank you for who you are and in your name I pray, amen. We're so glad you stopped by the website today. We pray the teaching you just listened to impacts you in a way that helps you on your spiritual journey. Please take time to check out the rest of the website. It is full of information about our church, as well as resources to help you in your walk with Christ. If you have not already attended one of our worship services, we hope you make time to visit us in the near future. Everything we do here is designed with you in mind. The Bible says your real life is found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All of our activities point to one thing, our mission statement. Real people living real life with a real God who has the answers.